Today, we're going to talk about EVs. Wait, n- no, not you. Just get out of here for a second. I don't I don't mean EVs like the Pokemon. I'm talking EVs as in effort values. If Pokemon were separated into a nature versus nurture component, the EVs would definitely fall into the nurture part. They allow for the greatest amount of customization of your Pokemon and can go a long way into determining how successful your Pokemon will be at its given role. For reference, I've included a link in the description to a couple of good resources on more explanations and specifics about how to EV train to your full potential. Before we get into how to use them to your advantage, let's talk about what they really are. Every time your Pokémon gains experience from battle, they also get an undocumented number of effort values from the Pokémon that just fainted. These EVs are typically determined by the quality of the Pokémon and that Pokémon's best stat. For instance, each Rattata you defeat will award you with one Speed EV, while each Geodude you defeat will award you with one Defense EV. Stronger, more uncommon forms will typically award more EVs as well. Raticate, for instance, will give you two Speed EVs, and Golem will give you three Defense EVs. There are a number of charts and tables all across the internet you can use to see which Pokemon give you which EVs, so if you're curious, do some searching. Like I mentioned before, these EVs are gained whenever your Pokemon gains, or would gain if it's already level 100, experience from defeating one of these Pokemon in battle. It doesn't matter if it was switched out or is holding an experience share, each Pokemon that gains the experience gains the full amount of EVs available. If you beat a Rattata with one Pokemon and have all five of the others in your party holding an experience share, all six of them will gain one speed EV. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, what do all these EVs really do for me? Well, quite a lot, actually. For every four EVs you gain in a single stat, your Pokémon will have an additional point in that stat at level 100. If you have a Pokémon with 100 attack EVs, and I have an identical Pokémon with none, your Pokémon will have an attack stat 25 points higher than mine once they hit level 100. But this probably raises further questions. How come there aren't Pokemon out there that have 999 in each stat? Well, the total number of EVs that you can gain on a single Pokemon is 510. No matter how many battles you have or how much experience you gain, your Pokemon can never have more than those 510 points used to distribute its additional stats. If you do the math, this equates to a total of 127 additional stat points you can basically distribute exactly how you want to your Pokemon. Another thing of note is that a single Pokemon cannot have above 255 EVs in a single stat. If you are planning on dumping all 510 of your EVs into speed, you'll have to rethink your strategy. Hopefully this is starting to give you a bit of insight into why these concepts are important. For instance, Blissey's attack is basically useless, so any EVs put into its attack stat become wasted since they will give you significantly more benefit if used in defense or special defense. This is also true for attackers. Breloom's special attack is quite poor, so focusing your EVs on its attack and speed make it a much more significant offensive threat than it would be if it weren't trained properly. This notion of focusing your stat distribution to play to your strengths and ignore your weaknesses is often referred to as min-maxing, and it exists in just about any RPG that you've ever played. Alright, now that you've gotten a grip on what they are and what they can do, what's the best way to start training with them? There are a number of different strategies used to make EV training simpler and faster. First off, remember all those vitamins you get during your playthrough? Each vitamin you give your Pokémon counts as 10 EVs in whatever stat it boosts. They make a good starting point and can really help you get going to EV train your Pokemon. An important thing of note when using vitamins, though, is that they have no effect when your Pokemon already has 100 EVs in the given stat. Basically, you can use 10 of them to boost your EV in that stat to 100, giving you 25 stat points when it's all said and done, and the rest must be done using more traditional training methods. So let's say you have a Gengar, and you want to train it exclusively in speed and special attack. You can start off by giving it 10 Carbos to increase its speed, and 10 Calcium to increase its special attack. You've gotten a total of 100 of the 255 possible needed to maximize each of those stats. 
The remaining 155 have to come from battles. As mentioned earlier, knowing which Pokémon give you the EVs in speed and special attack is half the battle. But it's also good to know some hotspots of where the best place to find them quickly are. In the case of speed, there happens to be a river west of Route 1 that is home exclusively to Basculin. Each Basculin will award you two EVs in speed, so you simply have to defeat 78 of them to accumulate the 155 additional EVs required to get you a total of 255. In much the same way, Celestial Tower is home exclusively to Litwick, who will award you with one special attack EV each. In this case, you'll need to defeat 155 of them to finish up your special attack training and get yourself a total of 255 special attack EVs. Now, I know what you're saying. That sounds like a lot of work and really tedious. Well, it is. It's part of the process required to maximize your Pokémon to their full potential. However, there are a lot of things that can be done to speed up the process. Certain held items will increase the EV gains you receive whenever you gain experience. The Macho Brace will take whatever EVs you would have gained and doubles them, meaning you'd get 2 special attack from every Litwick and 4 speed from every Basculin. This by itself cuts the number of battles in half. Other held items known as power items, the power bracer, power weight, power belt, power lens, power anklet, and power band, will each award 4 EVs in their given stat regardless of the Pokémon you just defeated. If your Pokémon holds a power anklet and defeats a Litwick, for instance, you'll gain 1 special attack EV from the Litwick and 4 speed EVs from the anklet. These items cut down training time significantly, since no Pokémon out there right now can award you more than 3 total EVs at once, and those Pokémon that do award 3 EVs are typically very rare or otherwise unfarmable for experience. Other items, like the wings you'd pick up off the Driftvale Bridge, can be used to increase your EVs by 1 each time they're used. They are more tedious than the vitamins, of course, but they also don't have a cap on them, so you can use them to train all the way up to 255, if you have enough. Even more significant than all of these methods, there is a secret to EV training that makes it incredibly fast and simple. There is an extremely rare condition known as the Pokerus that exists in the Pokémon world. Pokerus sounds bad, but in fact it's probably the best thing you could possibly get. The odds of finding it are incredibly low, about 1 in 20,000, which is almost three times as rare as a wild shiny. But once you find it, you can spread it to all of your Pokémon, and all of them can become carriers of it. Why is it so important, you ask? Well, it doubles the EVs you gain every time you gain them, much like the Macho Brace. When the Pokérus and Macho Brace are used in conjunction, they quadruple EV gain, meaning each Litwick becomes worth 4, and each Basculin becomes worth 8. Even more significant, though, the Pokeress also doubles EV gains from power items. That one Litwick you defeated from before while holding a power anklet can now become worth 2 special attack EVs and 8 speed EVs. Just doing the math on it, proper training using power items and the Pokeress can take a Pokemon normally worth 1 EV and make it worth 10, so you'll be done in no time. There are a number of nuances that come with the Pokerus and how to spread and maintain it, but the most important piece of advice I can give is that once you have a Pokemon that has it, immediately put it into your PC box. The Pokerus is great, but once it's carried for a few days, it becomes dormant and the infected Pokemon can no longer spread it. If an infected Pokemon is placed in the PC box, its timer is turned off and it can keep the infectious Pokerus indefinitely so you'll always want to have at least one Pokémon somewhere in your PC with a virulent Pokerus. Once enough time has passed and the Pokémon can't spread the Pokerus anymore, they'll be given a little smiley face icon. They will still gain twice the EVs as if they still had the Pokerus, but they will be unable to spread the disease to any other Pokémon. In fact, because of both the rarity of it and the impact it can have on all of your future training endeavors, Getting the Pokerus is worth much more than any shiny Pokemon you'd find in the wild. Unless, of course, you already have the Pokerus, in which case shinies become more valuable. There's a ton of information out there about more in-depth tutorials and hotspots for optimized EV training, but hopefully this has given you a good baseline to start training your team and getting it ready for prime time battling. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions for any future videos, leave them in the comments below. 
If you are interested in participating in our online Pokemon League, click the link in the description for more information.